Hello, everyone, and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm James Milan, and today I am in the studio with a couple of folks that I'm really in, uh, looking forward to talking to. Um, Cecily Miller is here from the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture, um, also known as ACAC. And for the purposes of our conversation, we may refer to it as the Arts Commission. Um, so, Cecily, thanks for being here. Thank and you. also, um, we are here really to introduce uh, our artist or ACAC's artist in residence for a year. Michelle Lugi is here, and we are going to be discussing both uh, the particular project that Michelle is going to be spearheading and the opportunities for community involvement in that project. Um, and get some background on Michelle's uh, history as an artist, et cetera. So thank you both for being here. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so to, to begin with, Michelle, uh, I just wanted to ask you to, um, uh, to just give us a little background about your particular journey as an artist to this point. Is it something that you came out of the womb knowing or, or what? <laughs> Pretty much, I think. Um, I have sort of always identified as an artist, and um, I went to Boston University to study sculpture. Um, and after school, I started to look around for what I felt was my, really what my theme and my um, work was going to be about. And I started to make work that was based on uh, nature versus humankind and the way that we interface with um, the world. So I used a lot of natural materials and combine those with um, cast off materials and uh, while doing that kind of work I wanted to use plastic and um, move into plastic bags and I learned about um, the plastic debris in the ocean about 10 years ago and I learned that I could crochet plastic um, so I started to make work on that theme mm -hmm. back then. You know, I, I just, before we get into the specifics of, you know, how the artist in residence came to be, et cetera, I just wanted to ask you, like, because I think people are always interested in knowing, does a person uh, who is, who identifies as an artist, that's what you do um, uh, for a job, um, is that something that you, uh, that you just, you, there was never any doubt in your mind that you, that that's what you were going to do and you do whatever you need to in order to be able to do that? Um, or is it something that you're, you feel like you have to balance with, I don't know, more commercially reliable uh, sources of income kind of thing? I do, I feel uh, like a lot of people People come to it in different ways, but it's sort of a calling, mm -hmm. I think. And for me, I I knew even though I like I, had, I don't have financial backing in my family, so there was there was a time where people said, "Where does the money come from?" You know, but um, I think that uh, if you have the will, you make it work. So you know, I've been able to um, fortunately I have a wonderful husband who supports my endeavors as an artist, um, but I'm also you know always have worked. Uh, for myself as well, so mm -hmm. yeah. So I wanted to get, uh, we want to focus on the, the project itself, Pathways, uh, that you're going to be undertaking, um, and ask for both of your perspectives. So Cecily, for instance, from the Arts Commission's perspective, um, what, you know, how did you go about identifying Michelle and deciding to mm. start this program of Artist in Residence? Is it something you do regularly or well, just I should tell give us a little, little bit of background um, because Michelle will be creating a large-scale piece for um, the Minuteman bikeway uh, a section of the Minuteman bikeway that's in the cultural district that for three years now we've been um, commissioning public art and developing it as um, as a vibrant part of the cultural district and a place since thousands of people go there an accessible place to experience art um, and also from the beginning, we've been interested in engaging the community of Arlington uh, in interacting with the artwork that's on the Minuteman. And so um, two years ago, Adria Arch led an effort to create something called Ripple, which was a knit bombing on 12 trees. And we recruited, we put the word out, and we recruited a 57-member knitting brigade of awesome people who created beautiful panels to wrap around trees. And this was an experiment for us to see what would happen if we put a call out to the public to say, you know, participate and, and share the ownership of this public artwork. 
it was so successful that I had been sort of thinking about how to how to build on that project. I met Michelle at a talk that she gave actually at the Harvard Science Library. I had seen her work before, but in this talk she explained the way that she makes plarn, which is this uh, yarn made from plastic bags and how she crocheted and I also get a sense of her character and um, which I just think Michelle is a lovely and welcoming and generous person and people will really enjoy interacting with her, learning from her, working with her. So um, I thought, well, this is a really interesting opportunity to bring another artist to build on this idea of engaging the community and making a bigger piece than one person could make. Um, and then the environmental message struck me as something people in Arlington would really respond to. I'm aware that kids at the Thompson School had organized to get plastic straws out of their classroom, out of the lunchroom. Uh, I think they even built on that work to get rid of all plastic from their lunchroom. They're, they're trying, yes. Yeah. We've spoken to them. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and the adult front, uh, plastic bags have been banned from Arlington due to community activism. So it, it just, I know that stewardship of the environment is really important to folks here. So for multiple reasons, it seemed like the you know, perfect project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and Michelle, how about from your perspective, how does an artist in residence position fit into your life? Is it something that you're, oh, oh this is great, this is exactly what I'm you know, hoping for, or you know, how, how does that work for an artist? Well, this is <clears throat> a really wonderful opportunity, as Cecily said, that to make more than one person can make. I am sort of limited by the amount that these little hands can crochet. And um, so to have 57 people, or you know, maybe more, maybe <laughs> less, um, contributing to that project, I think it's going to be amazing. So, um, so the knitting brigade is already on board. Is that is that is yeah, that? Yeah, we had one meeting already, and there was uh, 20 participants show up showed up, and there's more to follow. You know, people keep expressing their interest, and then we're reaching to other parts of the community. So. Mm -hmm. And how, tell us a little bit about, because Cecily's already mentioned how Arlington is ripe uh, environment for a combination of art and environmental values on display, activism, et cetera. Um, how has that been part of your own work um, all, all the way through? Yes, how, how have you combined <coughs> the, your, whatever your concerns or values are in the environmental sphere with your art? Uh, well, I usually start with a sort of natural looking object and I'm using um, uh, unorthodox materials to create those uh, natural forms and some, some of them can be like, for example, I'm crocheting this plastic bag, so the brown plastic bags that you get from Shaw's or Home Depot um, have this really kind of natural looking color when you, uh, you know, process them into a yarn. They, they can appear as a very natural looking, um, you know, object, mm -hmm. a hive or a nest or that kind of thing. Yeah, we've seen some <laughs> pictures of yeah. some of your work and it is, it, to me, it's pretty amazing and uh, very cool, again, that we're taking, as I, I mentioned to you guys off camera before we started, that, you know, you got this material that is inherently toxic and Right. and bad and um, industrial in origin and, and mostly in use, et cetera. And then you're transforming that not just into objects of beauty, but again, objects that evoke uh, kind of, uh, y you know, biological forms and processes. Um, and so I, I, I particularly think that that is a, uh, an inspired uh, kind of combination. Uh, and that people obviously are going to enjoy, uh, people in Arlington who do get involved with the project are going to enjoy uh, being able to contribute to something that ends up, you know, having, presenting plastic in that form, you know, almost, I assume it's almost unidentifiable. Right, uh, it's really transformed by the time it, you know, gets to the final of the, uh, of the object. The yeah. final form, yeah. uh -huh. yeah. Um, <coughs> it's a, it, it, it's um it's an interesting question, how do artists contribute to activism? How are artists different from, say, um, someone who works in an advertising firm and decides to donate their expertise to an activist cause and comes up with, like, you know, really clever but really clear 
um, slogans for an ad campaign to protect the environment. Artists are not going to be didactic in their work and they're not going to give one message. Um, and Michelle actually has a quote that she uses when she does her presentations that really beautifully articulates the fact that art can hold contradiction. So here are these pieces that she's creating, as you say, out of this kind of poisonous, invidious material that's crept into every aspect of our life that we want to ban and prevent, and, and yet she's, she's enhancing our environment with it. She's creating things that we desire. Uh, what does that mean? And so it just it prompts you to think about. It prompts you to think about plastic, its place in our world, what can we do to resist our own desires. You know, say the next time you want to buy that bottle of water because it's convenient, it's an object of desire, maybe you're going to say no. I want to explore a little bit more what you mentioned earlier, Cecily, about public art and how uh, there's, there are at least two, probably many, many more than that, interpretations of what public art is. I think many people would think, oh, public art is art that you see in public or that you put in a public place and people have an opportunity to experience it in that way. But I noticed that you mentioned talking about it earlier and talking about this project, there's a public, the, an aspect of public art here where the public is helping to mm -hmm. produce the art itself and you're inviting them into this process. Um, so tell us about the timeline for we're just at the beginning. In fact, I know that there's a kickoff event to introduce you officially to the community happening, I believe, at the library. Mm -hmm. Is that right? On uh, At Robbins Library on December 9th from 7 to 9. It's a Monday night, and we hope people will come out. We're planning a very engaging um, evening. Michelle will give a slideshow where she talks about her work and um, you get to see examples of installations that she's done in interior spaces and, and also outside. Um, but we're also going to have a fifth grader named Judah Almond who writes his own music uh, uh, that's environmental activism. He's a vegan. Um, we're going to have a, a someone from the green team to talk about what they've been able to do on the youth front to, uh, to limit plastics. And we'll have somebody from the Zero Waste Commission talking about their activities. So um, we're going to show people how to make plarn. <laughs> um, so it'll be a really engaging and interesting evening, and I hope people will come and find out about the project. Great. And that will, again, be on December 9th, which is Monday night, 7 to 9, at Robbins Library. But that also is the beginning, again, of the kind of official start, I, I assume, of your residency, or at least it's an event to introduce you to the community, as we said. Do you want to um, talk about the fox? Right. <coughs> um, so there'll be the fox on the, fox the library. The <laughs> I don't. Yeah. <coughs> um, the, so the Fox Library has a knitting group that will be um, meeting uh, to as like a month or weekly um, check in in terms of the participants that are um, making things for the project will come in and have an opportunity to engage with other parts of the community. Um, we're also having a, um, uh, I'm going to, that we have a collection box there for the bags. There, We're mm -hmm. um, exhibiting some of my work on a bulletin board outside and then um, I'll be installing work on the inside of the library um, just to kind of raise awareness of the project. Mm -hmm. and, that and, and I wanted just to say the, mm -hmm. the libraries have been an amazing partner for us. They've been really generous in opening their space to the project and we'll have storage space in the basement of the Fox. We want people to donate their plastic bags, especially from newspaper delivery. So we'll have this collection box right in the lobby. And as Michelle was saying, she's actually doing a public art installation in the library to kind of prompt people to participate. Um, so th they've been wonderful partners. I have to say I've been noticing for years as I bring our plastic bag, our trove of plastic bags coming mostly from newspapers over to Stop and Shop that that bin is constantly overflowing there. So I imagine that they will be happy as well as everybody else <laughs> to contribute um, you know, our trip. plastic bags to such a worthy cause. Yeah. Um, I, I am curious though about the, the timeline. You've mentioned now that there's a group that's come together at the Fox who are going, or they're already 
you know, have been knitting there, and they'll be doing stuff on the on the project f on a weekly basis. Um, hey. We're going into winter, but I guess people that doesn't matter, right? Because people can just start right. to produce the materials as as needed indoors, you know, in, in through 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 the cold and the snow, no problem. Right, exactly. We're having a um, more or less monthly workshop somewhere in the community, and then this weekly meetup at the Fox Library. And then, um, are there other aspects? Like, we're, we're right now, we're, uh, <coughs> we're working with the Council on Aging to have a workshop there uh, in January. Um, we're working with the Arlington Center for the Arts. Uh, part of our plan there is potentially to work with their teen counselors, teach them how to, to do the crocheting, and then enlist their help in doing a workshop for teens at the Robbins Library in February. Um, We've been wanting to get up to the Heights, to Arlington Heights, and do some programming there, which is not officially part of the cultural district, but we can certainly engage folks in uh, contributing to the project that will be on the bikeway. So we met with the owners of the roasted granola, and they are like over the, the, over the moon happy to be um, participating. So Michelle will also be doing an installation in their storefront which seems like it's a kind of informal community center for sure um, and we'll have a workshop and one follow-up kind of meetup activity there probably in March so um, we're hoping to do a project with the Otteson School in the after-school art club and with the green team so we're still kind of working out the details of all of these things and I'll say this, if there's a group out there that um, would like to learn how to do this project, would like to participate, contact me. We might be able to set something up. Uh, we're, we just got it, one of the members of the Knitting Brigade just got in touch with a Boy Scout troop leader to talk with them about creating Plarn and maybe learning to crochet. So it's, a, it's accessible, um, although I found it initially challenging, but I think <laughs> pretty much anyone can learn to do it. That's it for you. Right. Obviously, <laughs> you've just, uh, in, the, in your description there, Cecily, I think you did a, a great job of kind of reflecting exactly what ACAC, this umbrella arts and culture organization in town, is really all about, which is reaching out to different uh, elements in the community to connect them, and uh, in this case around this particular project, right. but I think uh, that that also uh, well reflects the work that you guys do in general, and right. you're describing everything from roasted granola to middle schoolers to octogenarians um, who you're going to be reaching out to. Art, uh, art is such a powerful tool for building community, bringing people to, together to celebrate their values and, and what they um, you know, what they love about the place that they live mm -hmm. and meet people that they yeah. maybe don't ordinarily meet, cross paths, uh, connect people. It's really, um, and it's, 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 this has been such a welcoming community. Um, could, could I mention a few supporters? Because the Mass Cultural Council gave us the initial grant mm -hmm. to, uh, to get this whole thing started, which they're a, an amazing resource for people who live in the state. And we also raise money every year through something called Chairful, where people buy, appropriately enough, uh, cycled <laughs> chairs, right? Chairs that have been transformed into artwork. And um, the Friends of the Fox is contributing to the work that we're doing at, at the library. So uh, it takes a village. We'll probably do some additional fundraising to, um, it's an ambitious project for us. It's the biggest project we've done to date. So one more question on the a more, a more personal scale, out of curiosity, is this uh, for you? Is this the? I imagine this is the main thing that you're going to be doing um, with your time over the next year. But is it is it the only thing, or how yeah. does again how does a uh, a year long tenure as a an artist in residence how does that fit into your life as an artist? Oh, that's an interesting question. <laughs> um, it's uh, well, art you can. It can really take over your life, um, but I, I will be spending, you know, many hours working on this project and um, doing, uh, giving workshops and teaching crochet. Um, but I also teach at Lesley University and a small uh, ceramic studio in Framingham called Community Kiln. 
and um, I have my own work. I have an exhibit at Boston Sculptors Gallery coming up in 2020 in the, uh, starts November 4th, I think, so. <laughs> Uh, so I have to prepare for that as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it's all about budgeting time. <laughs> right, right. So this does need to fit in right, with a lot right. of with a number of other obligations. Makes makes sense. But I'm sure that you will be prioritizing this as Absolutely. will the ACAC um, over the course of the next year. Um, it's an interesting challenge, I think, for an artist like Michelle, who your pieces are usually sort of in this neighborhood of size, to work in a public space because the whole scale is different. And so uh, I hope that this project will also support, you know, a kind of an, um, a new area for Michelle to explore. Mm -hmm. So it will sort of support her private vision of what she wants to do with her art in a way that, you know, maybe teaching in a university doesn't necessarily do. That, and could lead to other ideas, other projects. Um. <laughs> it's absolutely true. I think that I mentioned before, I'm sort of limited by what, I, or I have felt limited by what I can make. And um, the idea that this is something that other people can help me to produce, whether it be someone that I hire or s volunteers in a community project, it's <clears throat> a way of expanding my practice. So mm -hmm. it's exciting. Yeah, actually, what both of you just mentioned uh, remind me that I wanted to ask you how much, um, how clear is either your vision or your guys' collective vision about what this is all mm -hmm. going to look like, and how much do you know is just going to be you get started and things are going to happen, and there's a kind of an organic nature to whatever the final product is. Uh, yes, <laughs> I think that it, um, you know, it will be within the language of the work that I've already produced. Um, but uh, exact locations are still, uh, you know, being defined, and um, the the scale, like to, to how how much does twenty people produce or fifty people? You know, I don't really know uh, how much is going to turn up at the end. So. Um, so yeah, it's mm -hmm. yet to be determined, but I think it's going to be fantastic. We could call this piece evolution. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. It is actually called Pathways, right? Well, Pathways or, is the is name of the initiative to get artwork onto oh, okay. Minuteman Bikeway. Okay. Um, I wanted to make one other quick point, which is another uh, great supporter of this project is Charlotte Milan, who's the city's recycling who coordinator, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and um, who's a fantastic person, and she will also be putting a plastic bag collection bin at DPW. So uh, that's another place. Y really, the community can support this project by donating, donating plastic bags. Well, it's hard to argue with a shout out to my wife, I have to <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't know that. Yeah, there okay. you go. <laughs> um, so let me just, yeah, I mean, you, you've, you've mentioned, uh, you know, you, things have occurred to you to bring up as we've been talking. I want to make sure before we close our conversation that we have not left anything out that you feel needs to be mentioned to either of you. Um, and actually, before that, or hold that invitation <laughs> in your minds and by all means respond to it. But let me ask you this one question. Um, if folks want to get involved, Mm -hmm. um, is this a commitment uh, that they'll need to make over a o over some period of time, or is it something that they can kind of come into one of these meetings and make some kind of contribution and then not come back for a month? What are you looking for in terms of, you know, uh, either time or effort or energy or commitment from folks out in the public who do want to get involved? Uh, I think we really are looking for as many people to participate as possible, and we realize that not every person can, you know, make half a project, half a giant sculpture. Um, so we're looking for people to donate bags or process the bags or sort the bags or if uh, learn to crochet, and any amount of participation is really welcome. Yeah, I think one of the differences actually about this project from Ripple. With Ripple, people knew a specific panel size that they had to knit and buy a certain date and with a certain palette. Uh, and then it was up to them what sort of design they did. 
In this case, people can sort of dip in and out. There are kind of shapes, component shapes, that Michelle is going to distribute a worksheet kind of pattern for. And someone could make 10 of them. Someone could make 100 of them. Uh, uh, and then they'll be incorporated into a larger sculpture. And then there may be some people, so people can dip in and out according to their schedule. And then there may be some people who are inspired to become more creatively involved and may work with Michelle on dis, you know, assembling the things that they've made because this is not, everyone is not just, doesn't need to be an elf. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> there may be some people who uh, want to take things a step further and get a little, get, get a little more involved in the visioning. But definitely Michelle is in the lead um, and that uh, she'll be responsible for the creative vision we've been talking about Potentially, there being sort of three groupings that are almost like micro environments um, on the bikeway and that respond to the shapes of certain trees, maybe, or landscape elements. So it will be site specific, but uh, use the fact that you walk the path that maybe you will see, oh, up in the tree are a series of kind of nest shapes, and oh, over here is something wrapped around a, a different shaped tree. and it will kind of unfold and you'll realize this is all part of one work. Mm -hmm. And is there an end point? I mean, is there a point at which you're going to say, okay, we are done? Never. We're never <laughs> done. <laughs> um, well, we're talking about starting an in installation, physical installation in, in July. Okay. And, and whenever if you're done with the, the work that you're doing, you will declare an end in victory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that sounds great. Um, so I just w did want to return to that question I, I threw at, at you guys uh, a couple minutes ago, which is anything we're missing? Anything else you want to uh, remind our audience of? Obviously, we do want to mention the kickoff one more time. I'll let you do that. <laughs> hey, um, so yes, Monday, December 9th, we'll have a kickoff event. It'll be festive, interesting. Uh, we have ref we'll have refreshments, live music, um, conversation about plastic activism, and Michelle will be presenting a deeper talk about her work, um, and that's a great, you'll, and we'll also be showing people how to make plarn. Then our first workshop will be at the Fox Library on January 4th, and we'll be kind of publishing a schedule of workshops on artsarlington.org slash residency, so we'll be updating that regularly, plus you can follow um, the Commission's work on Facebook. Arts Arlington on Facebook um, for news and updates and hopefully we'll come back here Absolutely. And, and or <laughs> or have people come out in the field and um, document some of the workshops that would be great great yeah. anything to add um, I think we covered it <laughs> all right well thank you both for being here and this is great I mean obviously there are you you as you have detailed there are virtually no barriers entry for anybody who wants to get involved. There's going to be something that almost anybody can do to contribute. And uh, I think at the end of this, we're going to have, again, things of beauty all along the bike path at these different places, and a sense that it has been a true community effort to make that happen. So um, all to the good. So thank you guys for doing that. Thank you so much. And we uh, here at ACMI will be very happy to be part of this in whatever way we can as well. So good luck to you both. Thank you. Um, this is Talk of the Town. You've been watching. I'm James Milan. Uh, on behalf of Cecily Miller and of Michelle Lugie, I'm saying thank you for being here, and we'll see you next time.